not again. If that looks like your ball flight, I have for you the tip that's really gonna solve your driving. And this is really why golfers struggle to hit the driver as far as they should. They are trying to get their hands forward to impact. I have for you a very different feel if this is something you're struggling with. Now, not only they're losing distance, they're probably hitting a shot shape just like I did there. So for me as a right-hander, that's starting right, going further right. It is a push slice, very, very destructive and losing the yardage. Now, why did I do it? Well, my swing path was pretty good. My angle of attack was pretty good. My strike location was decent, but I had the club face 7.6 degrees open. And that meant the ball started right, went further right of the target, and it really increased my backspin. So the ball was doing this too much, way too much, in fact, three and a half thousand times a minute, and I don't really want it above two and a half thousand times a minute. Now, that is really down to the open face, and that's because my hands are more forwards. Now, it is true with an eye, and we do want our hands slightly forwards. With a driver, the majority of golfers are needing the hands to be more level with the golf club rather than the handle forwards. There are some elite golfers who you will see impact with a drive with a handle forwards. Now, they have to get what we call matchups, a couple other things happening there. So the guys who you'll think of who, who achieve that would be more like a John Rahm, a Dustin Johnson, a Brooks Kepka, maybe even a Rory. And they are very strong golfers, and they're generally, perhaps without the exception of, of a Rory, getting that club face more turned down before they hit the golf ball. So they're starting to get the voice face pointing down earlier. And what that means is they can actually get their hands slightly ahead through impact. And they do generate enough speed to let that happen. The majority of golfers, they're just going to hit what I hit there. It's going to start right for right-hander. It's going to go further right at the target. It's going to be a push slice. So we've got to try and get a very different movement. And this is the feel I want you to get. Instead of hands forwards, I want you to get the sense of the handle moving up, okay, through impacts, so the handle rising. Now, why do I want the handle to rise? And this is really important. If the handle is rising through impacts, the club head will accelerate because it wants to be in a line, okay? So if the handle is moving up, the club head is going to accelerate. That is a big, big power source, okay, that we need to use. So we want that handle rising, but it also, as my handle rising, it's going to allow the toe of the golf club to catch up to the heel. Most amateur golfers are returning impact with that club face open. Hence the pushes, the fades, the slices, the high shots, the weak shots, the lack of distance. We want that toe of the golf club to catch up to the heel. So instead of hands forwards, I'm going to sense here handle up. Now actually, as my handle starts to rise, a few other things happen. My handle starts to rise, the handle will actually start to work more inward, so it's gonna help my swing path. I'm gonna help close that club face from rotation of the club head and rotation of my body, and that inward arc. But as my handle rises, it's gonna force me to actually get my lead leg straightening as well, and that's a big power source. We want to use those ground forces, we want to feel like we're gonna jump. Okay, so it's this type of movement into impact that's really gonna help us start to utilize some speed because not only am I pushing off the ground, but I'm also rotating. They're two big power sources. So to start with, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put just a tee down with no golf ball. We're gonna set up to it. I'm gonna get the club to touch the ground before the golf ball. So you can see it's on the inside of my ball to target line, and it's way behind, at least a meter a yard behind the golf ball, maybe a little bit more. And I'm gonna move the club by getting that handle to rise, and that's gonna pull the club off the floor. Now I'm not doing that just by folding my arms, but I'm doing that from getting the handle to rise and my body to extend. So it's moving upwards and starting to rotate. And that's that sensation that I'm really looking for. The lowest point of my handle is here. The handle is moving up. And you can see that's gonna allow that club head to accelerate to try and catch up with my hands. So let's just start with a little drill doing that exact same thing. So I want you to do this on the driving range practice area, maybe even the garden, right? So set up to the ball, 
touch the ground before the golf ball and just actually get that club to move up. In fact, it doesn't even need to touch the ground. We could do this drill. It's a pretty extreme version, just with the club back here. A little pump maybe, just so we've got some momentum and just move the handle upwards through the strike. The next stage would really be putting that into like a little half swing. So start with a smaller motion. When you're trying to change a pattern, I'd always slow it down, or I'd always start with a smaller movement and then build that back up. Don't think you're gonna be able to do it flat out full speed straight away. So a little half swing with that sense of the handle moving up rather than handle forwards. You can see a big difference there. Okay, so a little half swing, really got that handle pulling up, really feel like my body is very tall, very extended, and actually for what felt like a half swing, I've hit that 180 yards with that run. So it flew, what, 155, rolled out there to 180, pretty straight shot as well, but just got that feeling I made it a little half swing, got that feeling I moved the handle up. It's a big, big power source. Start small, build it up. If you are someone where you're trying to get those hands more ahead, more forwards as well, you're also going to feel like there's a ton of tightness and tension in those arms. And that, again, is a big power leak. You've got to try and relax your arms, relax your grip pressure to help you maximize some speed through impact. So that was a little half swing. I'm actually going to go for a fuller one, but I'd, I'd do more of those, maybe even some three-quarter. I'm just going to rehearse. That's my lowest point of the handle. Just before I hit the golf ball, the handle is now moving up and inwards. My body is starting to rotate rather than hands forwards. Let's maximize our speed. It may feel like you're starting to jump a little bit. Oh, I hope that catches an edge of the fairway. That felt such a shame. I've lost out on a little roll there. But wow, that felt great. That was a good carry distance. So I flew that 261. Um, that would have run out there to a good 290. My spin rate, remember that first one I hit where it was spinning backwards at, what was it? Uh, three, over three and a half thousand revolutions of backspin. That one I just hit there, that was 2,000, under 2,200 backspin. The info will just come up here on the screen much lower backspin, 1,300 odd less backspin per minute, and that meant the ball carried another 40 yards. And I actually got my club head speed up to 107 there, whereas I think the first one I hit was closer to 102, so five miles an hour more with this magic movement. If you're not making it, you are losing out. Let's hit one more. just going to catch the fairway and give me that extra bit of yardage there. I actually didn't quite carry as far as the previous one. Slightly more towards the toe of the golf club, but very happy with it. Flew 260, finished 281. Uh, similar ball speed, very low back spin rate. Very happy with it. Very, very happy with it. The same club head speed, actually, just not as efficient a strike. Had I hit that one better, Think would be looking at some more distance. Well, my sensation there was the handle moving up rather than the handle working forwards. If you're someone who's fading it, slicing it, pushing it, or just losing out on club head speed, this is definitely for you. If the video does help, make sure you smash the like button and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more content just like this.